So who's going to win the war of words? Let's bring in media guru and pollster Frank Luntz. Okay, Frank, can the Democrats successfully kind of wiggle out of this, given kind of the polls that they've leaned on that shows the growing support among the young for socialism and some of the ever more radical leftist positions of their prime candidates? What do they do here? Half of all Democrats say they would vote for a socialist. And this is work that we've done in the last eight weeks. What you have right now is a battle, but it should not be a battle between socialism and capitalism. It should be a battle between socialism and economic freedom. And that's what I hear the Republicans starting to say. Because in the end, socialism means government control, government interference, all the things Americans don't want. But one warning, Laura. Young people are moving further and further to the left, and Republicans are going to need a message to, to attract them if they are to be successful. All right, well, let's get to a word that we've been hearing a lot of lately. Watch. Yeah. Despite your dignity, the values and human dignity. The sense of dignity. Good for you. Dignity. Good for you. And we did not talk about no. this before. Dignity. And That's just a couple of times. There are about 10 times they mentioned that in the last And they're all uh, doing debates. it now. So clearly someone's advising more than one candidate at the same time. But you know why? Because what they're trying to say is respect. If government doesn't respect you, then the only way that they can get around that is by using the word dignity, raising human dignity. It's a word that goes back to the 1960s. It was first used uh, it, for European socialism. I do think it's going to play well here. When they say dignity, however, I think you hear the Republicans and more conservatives come back and say, hmm, because a lot of the most undignified people in the, let's say, the entertainment elites have said the most horrific things. They criticize Trump for being coarse, but what they've done is like beheaded images of Trump, uh, the most Kathy disgusting Hilton. images of Melania. And Trump hasn't even gone there yet. I mean, he hasn't gone to, oh, really? Dign dignity? Is this, is, dig is this dignified? Or infanticide? Is that dignified? But they're using dignity as a way to support their government intervention. To them, dignity is welfare. Dignity is food stamps. Dignity is more government providing more services to people. That's how they And Republicans it. say, for us, dignity is the right to determine your own destiny without freedom. government interference. Dignity is freedom, the, the ability to make your own decisions yourselves. Now, Frank, I want you to listen to another phrase I think the Dems are hanging on. Watch. Health care, in my view, is a human right. Health care is a basic human right. We should give everyone in this country health care as a basic human right for free. Health care is not just a human right. It should be an American right. Good for you. I mean, the, the, I'm coming for your job, Frank. No, no. You're not going to need me anymore because those videos are so good. Yeah. And this one, 60% of Americans agree, and the numbers are increasing over time. My concern is that the Democrats are now using, lang sometimes, language of the right as a way to push policies of the left. And conservatives have to be careful about that. You use softer, gentler, kinder words to push things that are about either government control or government giveaways. And the conservatives need to have a message. They need to have an answer to that. Because when something is a human right, I think it was Charles Murray, I can't remember, maybe it was um, Victor Davis Hanson. When something's a human right, you don't have to debate it anymore. So if it's a human right, there's no debate. You have to give it to them. And you must be cruel or inhuman. Yeah, you're horrible if you don't think that everyone deserves a certain level of health care, a certain level of income, correct? And you just used the phrase, everyone deserves. And I've been criticized about this because I know that conservatives believe that things aren't a right. Life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. Those are God-given rights, but these other things are not. So I came up with the language you deserve, and I had people on the right saying, Frank, don't do this. It's not right. Oh, interesting. Okay, finally, here's the message I think that Trump and his uh, supporters and some of his surrogates will be pumping out. Our goal is peace and prosperity, not war and destruction. I'm very excited about new possibilities for peace and prosperity. Peace and prosperity. Peace and prosperity. Good for him. It's interesting, because the Republicans haven't really been on the peace side, have they? No. And right? I, I swear that you've been following me. Because I had a meeting over at the State Department today where I was talking about the word peace. Why are we not promoting it? And, and Trump is doing it. But it's only just started. Peace and prosperity are priorities number one and number two for the American people. If that's his theme, then he's, he's headed in the right direction. Frank, we were talking about this the other day, but liberals used to believe in peace. They were like the, the peace sign. 
Make you know, make love, not war. Now yeah. Trump's like, I don't want to make, I don't want to make so much war. I want more friends around the world. And they're like, how could you kowtow to these people? But liberals also believed in freedom. If you go back to the Crosby, Stills, and Nash songs, freedom is always on the left. Right and now, freedom is on the right. And control. So control versus freedom, liberty, responsibility. These are we're going to be unpacking this throughout the whole election cycle. It's going to be fun. Let's remember economic freedom not capitalism. That's key for those on the right. Fantastic. Frank, thanks so much. Thank